Good afternoon. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you to a BW Education Dialogue. Uh, today we have a really melodious conversation lined up for you because we have two special people. In music, we talk of Jugal Bandi. In business, we talk of collaboration. This is a collaboration between a giant in the schooling and education system and a giant in the music domain. So when collaboration happens, when Jugal Bandi happens, music gets created. Today, hopefully, through our conversation with these two leaders in their spaces, we'll talk about the role of music in education. We'll talk about the future of education, the future of schools, the school of future, and we'll talk about the GIS, uh, GIIS, and Shekhar Ravijani School of Music. Uh, let me welcome the two special guests that we have today. We have Mr. Atul Temurin Nikar. Uh, you know, my pronunciation may not be perfect, so I'll call you Atul, who's the co-founder of the GIIS, and I've had the good opportunity of meeting him uh, earlier. Welcome, Atul. Uh, you've been pioneer in setting up a school that is nurturing talent and preparing the leaders of tomorrow. So I'm glad you're here. We also have uh, somebody who kind of completes the melody. Uh, we have uh, somebody whose music has enthralled us. It has given us joy. Uh, we have lit when you use the word leading, sometimes we use it loosely. But in this case, we can say that he is the leading uh, music composer and a music professional from India, a person who really doesn't need any introduction. We have the very talented Shekhar Ravijani. Shekhar, welcome to this conversation. I Thank you so much. Clearly, Thank Shekhar you. doesn't remember me. I last met him seven years back on a flight. He doesn't remember the conversation, but I do. Uh, so let me start with you, Atul, first. Atul, uh, GIS has been a school that has been futuristic always. Uh, tell me, over the last 120 days, what have you done at GIS that can prepare it for the next leap? So thank you for having me and uh, together with Shekhar, it's an honor to talk to you, Mr. Batra. I think uh, the simple and straight answer to your question is actually we haven't done anything in the last 120 days. And the reason is whatever we have done in the last five years has been totally useful to us during these pandemic times. So whether it is a question of virtual schooling, whether it is a question of uh, you know, allowing children to study from overseas, uh, whether it's a question of, you know, having, uh, you know, electronic means of, uh, you know, getting assignments to students or having them even give exams on the virtual basis. I think we have over the last five years evolved a framework, what is called as the school of the future framework, which has already gained a lot of traction around the world. And this framework, one of the initiatives under that is really the smart campus and our holistic education of nine gems. We'll speak more about the holistic education, but coming back to your question, I think it's been the base that we have prepared, unknowing that a pandemic is going to happen. And when the pandemic happened, uh, just yesterday, one of the Singapore government ministries were speaking to us and they said, well, we didn't expect you really to have any issues with regards to pandemic. And did you have any issues? And I said, no, we had nothing. I mean, we were simply enjoying the entire virtual experience our students were able to get throughout the world. And uh, that is something very, very phenomenal. 15,000 students simultaneously having virtual education from day one, from the day the pandemic and the lockdowns were enforced. So that's something very uh, encouraging for all of us here. And we believe that there was no disruption in the education of any of, even a single child, uh, be it anywhere in the world. I also want to know personally how have been the last 120 days for you. What have you learned in these 120 days that will make you more humane, that will make you more futuristic, and dare I say, uh, that will in some way create more success for GIIS? Yes. So I, let me answer the, the simple part first. You know, personally, from a personal angle, I find these were the most productive days that I've ever spent in my life. You know, absolutely not a 15 minutes kind of waste of time has been, everyone has been engaged. All the teams have been on the, on the go right from day one of the lockdown. So we've been able to achieve a lot of work, which generally in normal circumstances would have taken us at least four to five times more time. Uh, but coming back to futuristic, I think 
what the pandemic tells us and our past experience uh, of the 2011 tsunami in Japan, uh, where we had schools and we went through a very, very, uh, you know, uh, rough experience. Uh, The thing is that we all have to become now, whatever business we are in, we should be able to do our business, whether it's education, whether it's retail, whether it's composing music, we should be able to do it from anywhere. So do it from anywhere. Is, is probably the new mantra for all businesses from all sectors and all industries. And that's, I think, what is also applicable to education. Although it may be easier for education to do this, but I think there are areas where we feel, for example, I mean, if you're talking about small kindergarten students who are age three to age six, it's very difficult for them to sit in front of a computer screen for four hours and go through a school curriculum. So we have to evolve new curriculums. We have to evolve new systems. So I think our futuristic thing would be really to see how a student can even get educated without a teacher intervention. That would be our futuristic model. Beautiful. Uh, Let me come to Shekhar. Shekhar, you know, um, last few months, there are no movies being made, right? Uh, uh, And you write independent music, but you write a lot for Bollywood. Tell us, how have been the last 120 days for you personally And what have you been busy with? Mr. Batra, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, We met seven years ago, but uh, as I told you last time, I was a little young. Now I'm a little old, so I'm a little old. But uh, it was just uh, an uh, amazing thing when I came to know about uh, you, you know, conducting this uh, whole webinar for music education, which is the most important thing at the moment. I think a lot of people need to talk about music education. A lot of kids need to know more about, uh, you know, how it's done, especially in this country. A lot of people kind of, uh, a lot of parents are very keen to know that how their kids can, uh, you know, reach the maximum potential. So I'm very glad and thank you so much for having both of us, Atul and I, on this show. Um, Mr. Batra, last uh, three, four months have been very, very good for me, actually. It's been very, very interesting for me. A, the most important thing, spend a lot of time with the family, which doesn't happen much because I'm traveling all the time or for concerts. I met you in a flight and I didn't let you in a flight. I must be sleeping on the flight. (laughs) No, I didn't let you. I don't let anyone sleep. I'm a talkative variety. Then I should have remembered who you are. It's okay. So anyway, uh, you know, spent a lot of time with the family, you know, got to spend a lot of time with my daughter, my wife, uh, speaking with them about, um, you know, life in general, which we kind of, you know, at some point life becomes so monotonous that, you know, you, you're traveling from one city to another city doing concerts and you're coming back and as soon as, as, soon as you head back, you're heading straight away to the recording studio and then you're coming back again and it's all hectic. But this time I had these beautiful three, four months with them. And uh, I don't know how long uh, we'll have to wait for this pandemic to get over, you know, but more the, I, I value the time which I spent with them. Uh, second thing is I wrote a lot of music in the last three, four months. I must have written close to about 50 to 60 songs, uh, which was amazing. And I kind of felt at some point that I've, you know, I had maybe lost some bit of it, which I found in this entire thing. Um, sometimes we feel that, uh, it becomes a job at some point, but sometimes when you're left alone without any formal, formal job, then you start making music for yourself. Then you start making music for, you know, you kind of express your emotion. When you express your emotion, when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're feeling joy, your music translates accordingly. So I made a lot of happy songs. So that, that proves that the, the music has been quite good and fun. Uh, so I have enjoyed that bit. Another thing I really enjoyed a lot was interacting with the GIS students, uh, which we've done about three or four sessions till now. And uh, seeing their enthusiasm and seeing the way they are kind of so excited about this journey. Actually, my... And you know, uh, Shikhar, I want to interrupt here. How did this Yugal Bandi, how did this collaboration uh, come about? Tell us the backstory on that. So, uh, Atul actually invited me to uh, the Singapore campus of GIS. And when I went to that campus and I, sh- it's magnanimous, it's massive, the place is humongous. But then when I saw the facility for music, it just felt like it's a music school. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got like more instruments, a lot of teachers and a lot of instruments and a lot of kids learning every kind of instrument. 
amazing energy uh, recording studios big stage uh, i've seen a massive led screen i've seen like editing facilities sound facilities i was like atul this you have a proper music school here you know it's amazing and i did my first workshop with the kids and that workshop was so amazing that uh, there's a lot of south indian community in singapore and a lot of students you know singing carnatic classical music and that was amazing to hear i was like really really um, so impressed uh, that they you know the school and you know the, the their music their teachers you know they carry their culture with them and they kind of you know still so close to indian classical music whether it's south indian classical carnatic classical whether it's hindustani classical uh, there were kids who kind of came up and uh, sang a film song for me uh, you know um, and and they also dedicated the song to me because it's one of their favorite songs which i have composed so it was quite an interesting thing it was beautiful beautiful beautifully rendered i remember uh, then there was uh, uh, a girl who came and played the violin and i was kind of so impressed with the way she was like and no one is scared it's amazing there's no fear in these kids i remember me being at that age i was like i was so scared my 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 feet would tremble even today they tremble but the kids their confidence i was like so impressed with them uh after that session we had another workshop after i think five or six months i i went back to uh, singapore again we had another workshop there but the last workshop which was about 6 to 8 months back was very interesting because um, i was going to do a workshop with them uh, teaching them how to write a song uh, and i got about 15 or 20 of them sitting in one room and we decided that today all of us here are composers okay we need to make a song okay what's the situation okay let's figure out what's the situation the situation is we are making a a, a anthem for the school let's make a gis anthem some kids started writing lyrics some kids started making the groove i put them all together and we made a song in about 2 3 hours and we put the song together we recorded the song together it was an experience which was like everyone it's recorded uh, and uh, at some point we'll be showing it to the world how this anthem was born uh, it was it was that much fun so i think this this whole 3 4 months i have had such beautiful experiences of uh, with these kids uh, on on uh, online sessions as well as uh, you know writing music spending time with family and uh, most importantly uh, you know uh, not being affected by the negativity which is all around the place at the moment um, i think it's now it's now hands how we uh, see life if you see it positively i think only good things will happen beautiful on that happy note let me bring atul back into the conversation atul uh, she could just share that how did this idea come about i want to talk to you about two things one is the role of music in education because i believe, believe that it brings out the creativity which then many gets manifested in every sphere of what they do right at the end of the day the objective of learning is to make creative minds right second is i would like to know about the formal tie up between you and shekhar to start the gis and shekhar ravijani school of music and what are your plans for it sure thank you so um i think creativity today is a uh, inseparable part of education uh, and when i say that uh, i'm i'm saying from experience i'm also saying from the fact that how i've seen people uh, really you know work on their creativity aspects so let me give you a small example uh, we have a program called study circles quality circles and students from middle school onwards which is grade 6 onwards start taking real life problems get into a you know groups of four and then their teachers would give them a topic to say you know not just world hunger and you know global warming ka types but really on the ground problems you know aaj yahan pe ye problem hai isko kaise solve karenge and that kind of you know looking at the situation being creative uh be being uh, curious about various things that has been adopted in the school but coming to a larger piece so you know when i used to go around various universities and i used to meet the various admission directors and i went to stanford once and in stanford i met uh, the director of education and i said hey guys you know we are from uh, singapore he said i know about your schools and i know 
uh, you know, you don't send too many kids to our university, but that's fine. And so I also visited Wharton and a couple of other big schools in the US. The conversation that we had at multiple times essentially told us one common pattern. The universities were looking beyond academics. And everybody said, very simple, just do holistic, and that is the end of the story. But we said, look, we are all metrics driven, so we must know what is holistic. So first we articulated what is called as a holistic education, and we established a framework called Nine Gems. Nine Gems holistic framework essentially runs from all the way from personality development to sports to academics to values and ethics to, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sports, uh, and sorry, uh, personality development and speech and drama. So while many of these things and entrepreneurship, so when we combine all these things together and we realize that every sector of this area needs to be really carefully nurtured according to the age group of the child. And so when it came to the performing arts and, and in sports, we've done a lot of work. We do gold squad program where essentially the top talent is picked up and then the school provides them uh, extra help and they all, they all go to then play in the national teams, etc. in various countries, including Singapore. So as far as performing arts were concerned, uh, so when I saw this and the Stanford guys were telling us that, you know, we want to see evidence of a child having done something meaningful in their life. And we then came back and our teams put together all the ideas, which ultimately came as nine champs. And then we added a data analytics uh, element to it. But then the question was in performing arts, what can you do? Can you uh, just ask the students to learn about personality, addiction, public speaking, et cetera, or can we get them to real life kind of experiences? So that's when Shrikhar actually was doing the workshops. And as he mentioned earlier, during that particular interaction with 15, 16 students, where a school anthem was created and, and uh, Shrikhar and I, we were, we were looking at it and we both felt, and Shrikhar was the one who initiated the idea. He said, you should do something long term because of the fact that his gurus have told him to do so and, and to distribute what he has learned throughout his life to other students and exactly what we are doing. We all have learned whatever in our MNC or non-MNC life and we are trying to put back that into education. And we also have a very good ear to the universities because they keep saying we want different types of skills, so we brought in skills education, etc. So I think we found a perfect story for our performing arts in particular in music segment. And like Shekhar said, the interest level of the students in music here is tremendous. Be it any music, not just Hindi or Tamil, there's regional music, there is English, classical, and every single type of music people love, children love. And we want to promote them. We want to give them their passion, the tools, the approach, and the systems and the processes, which will be helpful to them to kind of, you know, take it to the next level. Beautiful. Thank you for taking us through the journey of discovering uh, through data that you know performing arts and music can unlock the potential of the child. I think that's a very simple but very powerful discovery because uh, music is about being fearless. Music is about being yourself and music is about communication. I think that's what makes music. Uh, it helps you connect with people. And I keep saying that the beauty about music is if all human beings are like music, because, you know, you don't say this music is bad. Uh, you say, I like this music now, I, but I like this music in the evening. So, you know, music coexists at different moods and times. You kind of lean into a different music. So, you know, if our relationships could be like music where they coexist with each other and create a harmony, I think we would have a better society. Shekhar, coming to you, you know, you've given numerous hits to us uh, uh, and you've given us music that <clears throat> uh, gives us hope, so to say. Tell yes. us, uh, if we talk to you in a year from now, uh, the GIIS and Shekhar uh, Ravijani School of Music, uh, what kind of outcomes should we look at in the next 12 months? Uh, would it mean uh, you would have created superstar singers? Or do you think the impact will be uh, the creativity getting unleashed and showing in other parts of their uh, activity? So obviously I can't write their destiny, uh, but the most important I can, thing I can do is I can make sure that their, their love for music stays the way it is. Uh, that's the most important thing nowadays is about 
making a career in music is one approach and the other approach is falling in love with music i love that falling in love with music you got to fall in love with music you have to fall in love every single day you have to be one crazy romantic person loving music each day loving what you do what happens is in the last 25 years i have seen that people who focused only on music and learning music and learning even if you if you're 40 years old and 50 years old destiny on its own drives those people to become successful so, so here we are not going to be promising that's anything literally to poetic, huh? that's literally poetic no i i really believe in that i believe that you know we are nobody to take someone to a next level you know uh, they'll be taking us to a next level you know uh, i think what we need and atul and i want to make sure that you know we kind of give our best to these kids we kind of make sure that we kind of uh, show them the right path there are there are much much better teachers everywhere there are much much better teachers in gis itself but here i'm not talking about the basics here i'm going to be taking them through my experience i'm going to be taking them through a process of how a song is composed what should be your expression via music how you should feel when you make a song what's it's 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 a thing about these are the things which i wish were available to me back then uh, i'm going to be teaching them a lot of fine things which can improve their music theory and practical both these things are important which they already getting in school we're going to brush up their theory as well as their practicals make sure they do something which have never done before to give them a, sl- a a challenge because they need to face the challenge once you face a challenge you will kind of discover new things about yourself as an artist so that's that's going to be the plan uh, we we really hope that we find uh, you know a superstar singer from the school we really hope that one of them goes and gets the grammy but uh, what we're going to do is focus more on their learning at the moment and then destiny will take them wherever they want to go you know uh, shikhar when you interact with students or younger people tell us uh, how do you kind of judge or evaluate or figure out that this person can be a great uh, learner and can be a great music professional is there a way to kind of find that out mr batra i have done about close to 15 16 music reality shows roughly about 15 or 16 music reality shows and since 2007 when i judged the saregama uh, on ztv uh since then from the age group of say 8 to pretty much 32 33 i have seen all these kids who want to be playback singers and i've noticed one thing uh that there's a lot of rush in these people there's a lot of rush they want to kind of become successful overnight by the way unfortunately by the way that's true for every profession you know younger people are in a hurry so you can take entrepreneurship the people hamare hamare dada pardada kehte the ke bhai aap thoda samajh ke aur thehrao se ye jo shabd hai na thehrao wo aaj raha nahi abhi thehrao is basically that meditate learn well and then implement it here everything everyone wants to stop learning and execute unfortunately there have been cases where people through their so called art have become famous overnight through various apps um there are people who only concentrated on singing 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 playing an instrument playing an instrument and they are very very satisfied they are very satisfied they are very happy they are learning new things every single day they're not behind social media they're not behind oh i have to tweet something today or oh, i have to put something on instagram right now the pressure is too much on these kids right now it's time for them to fall in love with music again thus i keep on repeating that thing that my aim is going to be that keep that passion alive because some day somewhere is going to it's going to your 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 doors of destiny are going to open up aap mujhe ek baat bata rahe the you were telling me that when you judge these reality shows you you are telling me a formula for success if at all there is a formula uh, so and i interrupted so i want to get back 
to that thought process. There is there is no formula of success. There is no formula at all. You got to work hard. You keep on working. You keep on working. Yes. But yes. but but the thing is, kya hota hai? Yeah. What happens is that you make something or not make something. There are certain things which a doctor tells you. Exercise early in the morning. You do it, na? Religiously. If you do yoga in the morning, you do yoga in the morning. It's good for you. Treat music. Make it your lifestyle. Music needs to become your lifestyle. I like that. And you know how? What is you know what is the role of the right guidance? The role of mentorship. You know, uh, they learning for Shaker Ravi Jani. So don't they know that somebody who's done it and who understands it, who's still doing it, and keeping himself abreast with what's happening and succeeding in the current milieu gives them that confidence that if I'm getting feedback from an accomplished person like Shaker, then possibly uh, they are more open to it than just a music teacher who may be great too. Who, you know. You know there are great music teachers who have not been successful singers, right? Uh, it's it's like every, not every teacher goes and sets up a school that becomes big, right? So I just want to know that uh, when you talk to them, give us one or two stories that can gladden our hearts, you know, um, because you seem like a person who's very intense. So I'm sure you observe certain things uh, when you interacted with these young adults. so fortunately or unfortunately i have witnessed uh, a growth and unfortunately i have witnessed a fall also in the learning period um but let's talk only about the positive things here what i have seen is a child not being too interested in where the camera is where the lights are what pr the parent should be doing for the child what pr the child the, the child today is very aware of everything when we were children we had no idea about these things and these things didn't even exist at that point right right now we are very aware of things i see some children they are very very aware oh you got to be on social media you got to be active you got to do live every now and then you should be a part of so many so many things and you should kind of make sure that you are relevant and you are out there what happens is being chasing all these things your craft goes for a toss sure you got to work on your craft and i've seen children working on their craft and doing so well that i've seen a growth of a singer who was number 20 or 25 or was not a part of the top 15 or 20 in a reality show but the person who won that reality show got nowhere and the one who was number 25th had already sung six songs for a music director so your craft you got to work on your craft your passion your hard work yes social media is important but uh, a limited amount of time given uh, to be given towards social media thank you shaker you're saying things that are music to my ears literally you're talking about passion you're talking about hunger you're talking about desire i call it the phd of success if you have passion hunger and desire you will be success, successful and shaker you said something very important which is that you have to be a lifelong learner uh, you know aapko abhyas riyaz you have to keep practicing and improving your craft everything else is around it if the craft is good sooner or later you will find ways to be successful I think that's what you're saying. Let's stick. My khasa, my khasa, Doctor Batra, my khasa used to say that "gaao to ustad ki tarah gaao, aur suno to shagird ki tarah suno." Kya baat hai? I think that's applicable to every every sphere that you know. I I, I love you know I'm loving this conversation and uh, ek baar dobara kahiye shekhar jaise aap kehte hain waise main nahi kar paunga. Uh, gaao to ustad ki tarah gaao, aur suno to shagird ki tarah suno. क्या बात है सो अतुल इन दिस रिलेशनशिप हुज द उस्ताद एंड हुज द शागिर्द या एट डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स देयर इज अ यू बिकम द उस्ताद एंड ही बिकम्स द शागिर्द एंड समटाइम्स ही बिकम्स द उस्ताद एंड यू बिकम द शागिर्द यू नो आई थिंक अतुल एंड आई सॉरी अतुल आई विल स्पीक ऑन योर बिहाफ लेकिन हम लोग शागिर्द ही अच्छे हैं कि जितना हम सीखे वो उतना अच्छा है यू नो मैं गाऊंगा नहीं क्योंकि अगर मैं गाऊंगा तो सारी ऑडियंस भाग जाएगी बट एक गाना है 
जो इज अ मोटो ऑफ माई लाइफ एंड आई एम रिमाइंडेड ऑफ दैट इट्स अ बैंड कॉल्ड यू बी फोर्टी एंड डू यू नो वाई इट्स कॉल्ड यू बी फोर्टी शेखर नो नो डू यू नो अतुल हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ दिस बैंड कॉल्ड यू बी फोर्टी यस विच सॉन्ग हैव यू हर्ड वाइज मैन से Only fools rush in. That's the one. Yeah, can't help falling in love with you. Right. That's from right. the motion picture Sliver. Sliver. Sharon Stone. I watched them. Right. Every one of my age it was growing up. Now that I've grown up, watched it. Then there's another song called Red Red Wine. These are two popular songs. But there's True. a third song which is very. What is what Shaker is saying? It's a song called Higher Ground. And this is beautiful lyrics. I won't sing it because you know, you know, I don't think it's the appropriate thing to do. But it says. Every day, every hour, I'm learning more. The more yeah. I learn, the less I know. The less I know, I dig deep from the higher ground. It's a beautiful. That's what Shankar is essentially saying. At the end of the day, we know very little, and we need to keep improving. But coming back to you, Atul, um, in, you started this collaborative relationship, and you know, GIIS is a big movement. It's a big institution. It is spread across the world. In when we talk in 5 years time what is the kind of impact the giis shekhar ravijani school of music would have had what's your vision for this school so i think uh, we to i think to to set a tone for this particular answer let me also say that you know uh, there was a very nice interaction we had with dr abdul kalam when he visited three times one as a president and twice as after retiring from presidency and he was in all his visit he asked one question all the time he went to the student and asked him in a very casual manner are you happy he asked another student are you happy and then he told everyone that what you are trying to do in your life you may achieve it but don't forget to remain happy so you know that's the spirit that we want to bring in to all our students that look achieving is something doing hard work is something where your destiny takes you is something but be happy in life don't start cribbing you know i have this problem that problem don't get into negativities and recently we also mentioned about the same aspect of uh, you know the the negative side effects of uh, being on social media or excessively on social media social media mm-hmm. is not being going to be their life uh, social media is just going to be their so called you know black pepper which is going to add some masala to it that's it but social media does not feed creativity it it does not make them executioners good executioners good thinkers uh, good entrepreneurs you know so i think couple of years down the line i think as long as these students have adopted music and like shekhar says and you know, have fallen in love with music we expect them to either do something in this direction or who knows you know we have a program with uh, ncr business school and we teach students about entrepreneurship who knows some of these students may actually end up being entrepreneurs in music like you mentioned the idea before that you know it's is creating the other spotify or creating a, a whole sort of uh, you you saw how uh, tony fernandez of air asia came about he was a music entrepreneur ended up being a airline entrepreneur so we feel that there is a big chance big set of opportunities which are likely to come in the future for the students and i think they just have to take it as it comes to them uh they can't pre decide and decide that i'm going to be there or here but like shaker said earlier and we've had this conversation many times i said what stops any student from aspiring to become a grammy winner and what stops for any student to become a producer of music in the world of hollywood or bollywood or anywhere uh, and and you know singing for it i mean i i know kids who have grown up in singapore today are uh, you know assisting in the direction of hollywood music uh, hollywood uh, movies and they are becoming assistant directors and so there is a big world of opportunities be it whatever not just hollywood we we want these students to come up grow up with the perfect fundamentals with the right values with the right attitude and with the right courage to go about doing what they want to do because if they are sincere and if their love is visible for anyone to see they will be successful beautiful 
I think while this conversation is around uh, music and music education, what you and Shekhar are saying is applicable to possibly any sphere of life. And that is the role of learning. And there I say, uh, because of COVID, we have to learn and unlearn every three months, six months. The learning cycle is shortened. Uh, and technology will come and go. But the human values and the approach to learning will broadly stay the same. I use the term broadly. Now, Shekhar, I want to go to you. And uh, I want to know from you, what are the, you cannot talk about music education without talking about music. You cannot talk about the business of music without talking of without talking about what's happening to music tell us two three trends that you see unfolding in the music ecosystem over the next 6 12 months you already told us what we say in english that when fishermen are not fishing they're sharpening their nets you already created 40 50 new songs we look forward to listening to them but i want to know what are the big trends you see in the music business and hence uh, in learning about music. So I personally feel that um, I've actually been through a generation where independent music was bigger than Bollywood music. I have seen that trend reversing somewhere in 2004, five, where Bollywood music actually again took over independent music. It's changing again. Independent music is back big time again. It's being consumed more than Bollywood music at this point. There are a lot of platforms which are very easily available for anyone to put their music up. A lot of platforms now. There are loads and loads of record companies available there to distribute your music. There you, you, I see yesterday I saw something where you pay $17 a year to a company. They will distribute a mu uh, music and put it on every platform in the world for you. It's so amazing that right now is the time for everybody to kind of demonstrate and display their personal expression. Whether you're a Santur player, or whether you are a tabla player or you're a cello player or a ghazal singer. There is nothing as ki ye music chalta hai, ye music nahi chalta hai. As a consumer, you can go and see every single thing. There are people from my parents' generation who say that ghazal gai ki hua karti thi pehle. Ab nahi hoti. Nahi ye ghal baat hai. Hoti hai. You're not going in the right places. There are singers. There are singers who have taken up ghazal professionally, been doing a lot of concerts. There are a lot of poets who have been writing from different parts of India. Unfortunately, Bollywood music is something which people kind of consume at a higher level. Because there's a face of an actor attached to it. There's a big production house attached to it. There's a big director attached to it. The news and the buzz about the song is very big. So everyone gets to know about it. For an independent artist, it's a struggle. Because there's, there are only a few levels of, you know, where they can be advertised or where they can be, you know, the way the music can go. But I think, I think now, next six, 12 months, six months, 12 months, I know a lot of independent artists who are going to be coming up, new bands, new electronica music, uh, rock music, uh, hip hop music. Obviously, the whole hip hop culture has just started post Gully Boy. I think this whole movement, there's something going to be so extraordinary coming. Because this is the last three, four months, I know a lot of musicians who've just sat and made music. So we're going to witness some incredible music in the la in the next six to twelve months. Beautiful. You're saying at the end of the day, technology will help you distribute, it will help you propagate, but that the core of what you do is creating music. And as you, you can sit at home, start a song, and within two days or three days or four days, sitting in the same place, make sure that your music is available around the world. Absolutely. So it's about the craft of music. It's about the music.
distribution is easy, marketing is easy. As you rightly said, music is about the individual expression that all of us have. Uh, it's about time to create that individual expression. Right. Okay, uh, there are lots of questions, comments coming in, you know, they're visible to both you and Atul. I just want to ask you, who are people who had influence on your life uh, from a music standpoint? Of course, you talked about your Ustad, you talked about uh, your parents, you alluded to both these. Uh, so them and who others? Who are the people that you look up to for inspiration, for guidance, uh, people you know? Uh, so it'd be lovely to know why and who are they. So my Ustad, Ustad Niazam al uh, passed away almost you know, six, seven years after I was training with him. Uh, he was my force, but before that, a very strong force of my, in my life was my father. Uh, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal accordion player. And he just plays as a hobby because we are from a business family, so he doesn't find much time. So he plays, uh, he, he actually got me my first big, huge six octave keyboard. Uh, called TS-10 and Sonic, I remember. And uh, he gave it to me when I was uh, in my ninth standard. And I started making music. And then I started recording music through a tape recorder and recording it on a tape and, you know, playing, giving, distributing it to all my friends. And, you know, this is the music I made today. Anyway, so him, um, the music he used to play at home used to be uh, Beatles. He used to play Ardi Woman. Uh, Jagjit Saab used to play non-stop in my house because he was he was a fam family friend and he used to come home very often. And I was very fortunate to get some training from him too. Um, these people have uh, played a very important role in shaping up my craft. Uh, and I would say after after my teach, I mean my learnings from them, I think the 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 best learning happened via listening, going for concerts and just seeing what people are doing, whether I would go for Zakir Bhai's concert or whether I would go for a Philharmonic somewhere or whether I would just go and watch a rock concert that has been a learning for me. Um, also listening to music when, when things started changing at some point in the music industry, when A.R. Rahman came in, you know, sonically things just changed in the business. He He's played an important role for, I think, every single musician right now. So Mr. Rahman has kind of, you know, changed the way we kind of think about music. And Panchanda will always be a teacher for life. You, know, you keep on hearing his music and you always feel that, you know, he was just incredible. Michael Jackson, you know, I was fortunate to see his concert. I was right in the front and he was performing there at the Andheri Sports Complex. So I can never forget that experience of how, how a performer should be performing on stage, the kind of songs. Uh, so I think all these people, you know, my daughter actually has given me a new playlist of the songs she listens to. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, wow, where did you get these songs from? And uh, he said, this is modern, this, this is new stuff which is happening. And on you, a list, I keep and, asking on, my daughter also. And, on, and on a list, none of the singers are like really big, popular A-list these are B and C list singers, but they are brilliant. So there is music all around the world. People are consuming, the right people are consuming it. So I get to listen to a lot of music from my child. So it's amazing. I think this, this learning will never stop and I hope it never stops. Beautiful. Uh, Atul, uh, you've been part of building a big institution. I wouldn't call it a school. It's an institution. Anything that lives over a period, long period of time and impacts a large number of people, uh, is an institution. So tell us what have been your top learnings of building this institution called GIIS and how do you think you'll apply them to building this school of music that you're doing with Shekhar? Yeah, so Mr. Batra, the, uh, there are learnings happen through the journey. And uh, I remember a conversation I was having with uh, a gentleman, Mr. Ramakrishnan, uh, in 2002 where I had gone to meet him together with uh, Justice Dharmadikari. So Mr. Ramakrishnan was the head of Bharti Vidya Bhavan and in Bombay. And he was, uh, he said, you know, I would like to have a chat with you. You want to start a school. And uh, he incidentally had worked when he was a young kid. This was in 2002. He was almost like 85 plus. 
and he was while he was young he had the unique uh, opportunity to work with mahatma gandhi so when i met him uh, my first impression was wow you know you work with mahatma gandhi but he was sitting in a simple white dhoti a white kurta sitting on a low lying chair talking to a couple of media people and i said this is stunning you know i mean you somehow get this impression that every successful person is a very big person and you know has a certain image about him but he was an absolute simple down to earth person and he told me one thing he said atul uh you want to start a school but uh, listen to one thing he said never chase money always do something for the for the students something which will add to their value add to their life they will be able to use it and be sincere in what you are doing exactly like what shekhar has also mentioned which is you know be true to what you want to do and be sincere about it and have that passion and he said everything else will fall in place but if your fundamentals about these change any time and i know i mean education is lucrative it is financially great and i have come across people uh, unfortunately who think that this is a great way to make money there's nothing wrong in this but what are you delivering to the students so we always had finance never at the front of our mind it was always at the back end to deliver something it was a means to deliver the education and I, the way i see the school of music really shaping up is to take some of those learnings and to make these children really grounded you know shekhar mentioned about rahman sir we had a uh, once he had visited twice uh, in our school and when he was uh, when he was in the school one of the small girls maybe about 7 uh, 8 years of age she actually sang his own song and uh, he later told us that actually the girl sang sang it in a much more better way so i asked the mother i said is she learning music and she said no it's her hobby and she would like to sing all rahman songs uh, rahman sir song and that's how you know she got picked up and she sang there so this is what we want to teach our children and leave message that if you have passion for music this is an opportunity for you to really take the best out of it it is up to you how far you want to take this how wide you want to take this but as long as your passion sticks with it you see you are falling in love with it you see you are able to be grounded you are able to be creative about it because it's not just about you know we grew up in the days when uh, the the tapes were always you know copy paste of music and uh, so gone are those days and i think this young generation is growing up very sensitive to all the various issues around uh, themselves and we feel that they with the values that we are imparting with the entrepreneur spirit we are giving them i think music will be an element that they will go for and i'm sure they will see mass massive opportunities around music maybe some of them will end up you know singing songs some of them will be ending up in different industries in different countries because who knows you know which part of the world they will go and settle down so but we feel that this is the best time they can learn something very valuable extremely close to our heart and to shaker's heart and be able to take this forward and be a happy person in life beautiful i want to ask my last two question uh, one shaker in anything especially in creative arts in a performing art if i may call uh, the risk of failure is very high and i keep saying india hasn't produced a single product company or in spite of having the most brilliant hard working resilient people we still haven't done a lot of things that the western world has done is because we do not celebrate failure we only celebrate success what do you have to say to that i will only be talking about ce- celebrating success here because uh, um what i have witnessed in my in, in my life and i've seen it happening to me as well as my other colleagues is um, you got to put it that you you got to put that hard work and you got to put that effort and you got to put that and destiny plays a very important role too so if that if if everything uh, when they say that the kundli mil gayi hai when you say okay sab kuch theek tarah apne aap you know align ho gaya then suddenly you hit a stage in your life which is like you didn't expect yourself to reach a place like that in your life 
Uh, I, I, I would prefer that to be slow and steady rather than becoming a so, superstar overnight because anything hap- that happens overnight kind of falls overnight too. So, sure. uh, you know, be, be the best, be absolutely amazing, but just stay at that level. You know, there's no point going, rising too fast to the other level and then falling back really hard because I've seen that happening too in my journey. In the last 20, 24 years, I've seen a lot of people who, I'm not kidding, had uh, had literally um, attained the superstar status. And then in about two or three years, they were looking for work in the business. So, uh, And when I see those times, I always, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to God that I haven't, even after, uh, you know, getting that success and that getting that back-to-back hits and, you know, being loved by people, uh, you know, still challenging myself again and again to work hard and to make sure that I, I'm working on something which was better than the earlier one. What I did. Always challenging myself to give my best again and again. And not suddenly feeling that, you know what, I don't need to do music because I'm a king. I'm a star. The day you feel you're a star, you're a king, that's the time it all starts falling. It all starts falling very badly. Thank you, Shekhar. Uh, I think while we're talking about music again, for any student or anybody in any profession, what you said is invaluable. You know, there are lots of people asking lots of questions. I'll take two, three, just to kind of sure. make it real. Yeah. And you know, the, one is Preeti Kanekar is asking, Shekhar sir, when will be your next album out? Very soon. I have 50 songs now. You'll have to, you know, you a song will come up every every couple of months, I think. Priyanka Nongkla is asking, what do you think of the independent music scene? And he's already answered that possibly he believes that uh, the next few years will be seeing a big resurgence of the independent music scene and you know artists who patronize that. There are two questions related to education. I would like to ask that to Atul and you can also shake or take it. Uh, one is from an educator who I know. I don't know. He's still online, but Mr. Sushil Dutt Salwan is the Salwan Public School in Delhi. So he's asked this to Shekhar Ji, but Atul, I'd also like a response for you. Shekhar Ji, why don't you tell the top 10 schools of India to recommend their two best students in music to enable Bollywood to adopt them, nurture them, train them, and then absorb them instead of struggling, letting them struggle like slaves. After all, merit is what music industry wants. Why let them frustrate? Uh, Mr. Salwan, that's why they started the school. That's why Atul has done this partnership with Shekhar. Uh, and uh, you can respond. There's one more related question from a guy called Piyush Sharma. He says, he's from Gurgaon. And he's uh, saying, hi, everyone. I'm Piyush Sharma, music producer, 2D, 2D, 3D animator, a YouTuber from Guru Gram. Thank you for arranging these webinars. These are very helpful for me. My question is, nowadays, music learners, especially vocal students, are so much confused between learning Western or should they learn Indian vocal music? The main problem is they want to make their career. Uh, which one should they choose? Uh, because they want to choose a career where they'll get a lot more support. Uh, they can be successful in reality shows. And those who learn Indian classic wins the heart in show, but uh, they don't become like the bands who are Western vocalists. And so he's saying, you know, Indian classic music is not doing well because the audiences are limited. I think that's what Piyush is saying. So these are two questions, Piyush, Atul and Shekhar, whichever way you want to do. Piyush Bhai, I'm going to take your question first. Uh, there are a lot of parents who actually feel that if I like Hindi film ki music, then my child will like Hindi film ka music. It's not necessary. The thing is, it's very important. I know, I know a parent who spoke to me day before yesterday and said that they're from the film industry. So said, my, my, my daughter has been kind of, you know, singing a lot of Western music. But I want her to learn Hindustani classical because she will eventually go into the film world. I said, it doesn't work like that. You know, every one of us, every one of us like a certain kind of music. If your daughter loves Western classical, she should sing Western classical, learn Western classical. Okay, don't make her sing Western classical and Hindustani classical. The kid is going to get confused between both things. 
and for western classical if you're thinking about a career there are musicals abroad she can start her own band she can release her independent singles there are so many things she can do so i personally feel ke actually hamari khwahish zyada hoti hai aur bachon ki khwahish ko hum log thoda kam consider karte hain sab maa baap jo unki apni khwahishein puri nahi hoti wo chahte hain ki unke bacche wo kar le to that's ki mera bachcha reality show mein jaye ha aise zaruri nahi hai ki aapka bachcha aisa zaruri nahi hai ki aapka bachcha reality show mein jayega to hi acha hai isse zaruri nahi hai जैसे रियलिटी शो एक प्लेटफॉर्म है वैसे यूट्यूब भी एक प्लेटफॉर्म आप प्लीज शूट करके वीडियोस डालें यूट्यूब पे और लोग देखते हैं पीपल फाइंड मीन आई गो ऑन यूट्यूब टू फाइंड न्यू सिंगर्स ऑल द टाइम सो व्हेन एंड दैट सच अ फिनोमिनल प्लेटफॉर्म हमारे टाइम में कहा थे यूट्यूब जैसा कोई चीज थे था ही नहीं वो टाइम पे बट दैट्स अमेजिंग वे यू कैन कैन ऑफ पुट योर डेमोज आउट ऑन प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक दीज साउंड क्लाउड आर सो मेनी प्लेसेज नाउ पीपल कैन go and audition new voices and new singers on the time atul you are you you heard these two questions yeah firstly uh, i think uh, you took mr Qu- the question from mr salwan and i have a great regards for him as an educator i met him 15 years back in uh, gurgaon and i've also met his daughter indu ketrapal couple of times and she's been to our schools also uh, i think his his idea is exactly what has driven us for this initiative which is uh, you know because uh bollywood has its own set of uh, uh dynamics that play there and there are different considerations uh at, as a school we don't have control on those considerations but as a school we do have control on the fact that we can offer a very high class uh world class music program or uh, through our music academy so i think that's what we decided that you know instead of uh, trying to depend on some other people and you know uh, whether the initiative will work for them or not because in today's times like shaker has said all these young children have access to all the you know platforms uh, where they know how to put it so the way we put it in our schools is we said look if you are interested we don't even run a flyer for this we don't even send out a word of uh, or a email or something to say we have auditions no it's just like uh, shaker will come in sometime a small music teacher will spread the word out children who are interested they will come and they will join the program and i think that is a natural way of getting somebody interested because like i like shaker has said there is no ticket to success i mean just because they are here i know there are many institutions around the world who have great uh, music academy say in la or some other places but there's no guarantee that you may end up you know becoming one of those uh, successful uh, artists it is all up to you it is all up to how you want to drive it and it is all up to your opportunities Uh, i would say uh, being grinded waiting for the right opportunity uh, not getting too worked up about it because nowadays social media like unlike our days now this has become a pain for everyone uh, and uh, unnecessary mental issues hamare bachpan mein ye hota tha ki kisi ne humko kuch gaali de di to hum log upset ho jate the par aaj to aisa social media mein you never know who is saying what and from which forum so children are having massive issues on mental health unnecessarily this is a complete uh, kind of ecosystem we have created and they they are unfortunately going through it but they are the best place to come out of it to to remain unscathed to be focused on what they are doing and and i can tell you that i mean there are even today there are kids who are so well focused uh, not just in the area of music but there was a student that we had she was always talking to our teachers about going and doing something in the space area of space you know uh, just recently the spacex launched a, a massive rocket into the sky and uh, to the space station and she was one of the fortunate team members who worked on that particular aircraft uh, which went uh, space craft which went into the space so i think all we say is to the children dream about good ideas be be creative if you fail spring back you know you have all the opportunities to kind of spring back and and be more creative in what you are doing but don't blame your you know journey you don't blame your sort of you know personality ke mere ko ye mila hi nahi mere parents ne diya hi nahi ye ye sab aapke hath mein hai aapko jaise ki use karna hai aap kariye aapka pura opportunities aapko aayegi aur jab aap use karenge usko to you will find success and happiness in whatever you do good uh, this sapna bakshi i don't know who she is but she says something which you both of would agree i love what she says she says one can't choose music you can only go with the flow it is what you can connect with it is a soulful experience it's like love 
like in experience, when, where, how, and why it happens cannot be answered. Music is like love. You can choose, you can only go with what you feel. Uh, and she said, it's a vibe you get hooked. It's a vibe you get hooked on to. Uh, Shampa Chaudhary is asking, sir, and that's more to Shekhar. Um, there are many students who will love to learn from you. Uh, can you take one workshop for students? I'm from Ramjas School, RK Puram. There are many uh, similar care from various school, I think principals or directors or, you know, so I think you should, you should write to the GIS uh, uh, school and uh, maybe the team BW can share an email ID where uh, you can write uh, and maybe collaborate with their school. Uh, you know, and today we live in the era of virtual schools. I mean, you have a huge campus and infrastructure, but uh, you know, EdTech is dominating. Uh, Shekhar, it would be very unfair and very unlucky if I didn't ask you to sing a song that you like. I mean, there are lots of people asking you which song to sing. So, ek gana to gadi je, ek ek ki jo abhi naya uski jalak dikla di je, jalak. Jalak. Or ek jo apka favorite hai, itte saare apne hit diye. There are some recommendations there. Uh, I'll leave it to you. Okay. okay. बिन तेरे बिन तेरे बिन तेरे कोई खलिश है हवाओं बिन तेरे Thank you so much, Shikhar. I mean, we could go on asking you for songs, but I'd like to applaud. Uh, there are lots of requests and there are lots of suggestions. There is a school in Amritsar that wants to collaborate with you. Uh, so, you know, I don't have Atulji's email handy, but you can write to me at anurag.batrat.businessworld.in and I'll make sure we connect you with uh, the GIS school and the GIS and Rav Shekhar Ravijani School of Music. Uh, I would like you, your final comments uh, from both of you uh, and advice to people who are seeking hope, uh, who are seeking wisdom. So first from you, Atul, and then from Shekhar. So, uh, Mr. Batra, I think... Uh what we would only say to all the aspiring students is uh, chase your dreams, have a dream, chase your dreams. And with all the might of your passion, be into something. And while you chase your dreams and you follow your passion, if you are able to get a calling and you are able to get something which is matching your passion, just go for it. But while you do that, just a word of caution, always think about how you're going to feed your family. And don't dis, don't separate the the financial basis of what you do with what your passion is. So I think there's there's a way you can find a solution to it. And uh, you, I'm sure whatever you do, if you do it in a good way, if you do it in a way that is genuine and people find it, it's absolutely sincere. Uh, it is it is only going to bring you success. And if it if not today, but tomorrow. Thank you so much. I agree. Shaker also said. If you just do what you do well, I mean, if you're a musician, if you just get good music, everything else you'll hire professionals or, you know, you'll collaborate with professionals to market, distribute. So whatever you do, whether if you're a batsman or a cricketer, if you're a musician, you know, if you're a teacher, just teach well, you'll find opportunity. But uh, I understand where Shekhar, your final word, your advice on hope, your advice on wisdom. My advice is be happy, guys. Be happy. I think all of us are very fortunate to be where we are in life. Um, there's a lot of pain in the world. There's a lot of uh, pain the world is going through. You're in a much better place. 
समटाइम्स व्हेन यू फील कि यार ये ठीक नहीं हुआ मेरे साथ ये ठीक नहीं हुआ आई थिंक यू शुड नॉट कंप्लेन अबाउट दोस थिंग्स एंड जस्ट बी इन अ वेरी वेरी हैप्पी स्टेट ऑफ माइंड गिव हैप्पीनेस टू पीपल द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज एंड इफ यू आर सैड और इफ यू आर अपसेट शेयर इट स्पीक टू वन पर्सन अबाउट इट स्पीक टू समवन यू ट्रस्ट स्पीक टू समवन हु विल हियर यू आउट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू शेयर व्हाट यू फील and don't shy away from that but always be positive be happy do things for others don't only think about yourselves think about others too everyone needs you you need people be there for people they will be there for you just spread happiness that's it what a beautiful see you know while i do this for a living i keep saying i'm blessed because you know i get to meet eclectic set of people talk to the learn from them so i'd say two things i had a uh, one is you know be grateful for whatever you have that's what i agree when i was 12 years old uh, this long time back i have an oldest sister who's 16 i mean she was 16 at that i was 12 is 4 and a half years older to be and i'm mother my parents live with me and they uh, my mom would say that bhagwan ko bolo thank you aaj tumko khana mila hai tumhari aankhein theek hai naak theek hai heart theek hai so i used to look at my sister and say ki kaisi baatein karti hai mummy you know and i was telling my mom cup six out months back that now i understand what you say that just for simple thing this conversation why what i i do this for a living but i am just loving and i'm just i feel grateful that i can have this conversation whatever it's just listening to that song that you want to listen to you know reading that book just being with your family i mean we are very blessed i am very very blessed so just being grateful every day for being alive for being you know cheerful if not so be i believe being cheerful is bigger than being rich if you are cheerful i mean what do you want to be rich for you want to be happy so if you can be happy second thing i would say i wrote a piece it's called introduction capital and i wrote how introducing people to introduce them to people who they need to collaborate can create wealth for them and i called it you know because i believe the right introductions are everything you know and i keep saying you know growth and success is, is a function of opportunity it is not a function of talent you know talent everyone has a lot of people say cuz that so i think uh, help other the gist of that article was help other people god will help you grow that's what i believe in be grateful help other people grow and automatically god will send you ideas even if you're in a tough situation there is nothing that cannot be solved as shekhar said talk to somebody you know um talk to a friend talk to a relative talk to somebody who professionally does this but talk there's no problem that cannot be solved there's nothing it hasn't been invented even corona will eventually uh, be tackled with uh, with a vaccine this shall to pass so i'll leave it at that uh, thank you shekhar it's been good uh, talking to you and listening to you and discovering a little bit of you i can't discover too much i do know that you are 29th november born i was doing research on you you were born in buj right no i'm born in bombay actually uh, but, but is, your family is from buj uh, uh, yeah my family is from kutch yes yeah kutch sorry yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're from gujarat so mr mr batra uh, thank you uh, you know this i have to say this and to all the people who are watching this right now this is my first ever webinar oh and i'm so happy and i'm so glad that this webinar happened with atul and anurag i'm so so happy thank you so much uh, you know i know this is your this is what you do but you know speaking about music speaking about passion speaking about love these are things which should happen very often and thank you so much for making that happen thank you thank you for being so humble uh, and so real and really i can i tell you you know i'm i'm first generation atul and i'm you know i acquired business world uh, you know i built i was lucky enough to build let's say for me there were two friends and again it happened you know honestly there's a lot of serendipity there's a lot of divinity i mean just because i work hard doesn't mean that it has to happen if the god wants it to happen it happens it happens with good intent and you know i you know i have a certain vision for business world i've done only 20 30 percent struggle because i acquired a company that existed for 30 for years it's the 40th year 6 uh, plus years i have only but i i feel in the last as you said these are most productive days 
last 120 days have been the most productive days and i am very mindful of the problem that people have but you know uh, what shekhar said somebody is helping me raise capital i'm raising another round of capital uh, to make a huge digital leap and he said somebody very big i don't want to give his name if i and he said you know anurag i'm going to back you up because i see a child like uh, you know enthusiasm so while i may do this for a living uh, honestly i prepare maniacally in my own way for everything and uh, you know i'm excited when i do every you know conversation because i love this you know it's not about money it's, it's just i feel that you know i you know this somebody could charge me for doing all this you know it's like I, it's my job but i love doing it uh, and I, so every is conversation is inspiration i learn something i you know where i am i get to meet such accomplished people and i'm more often than they learn me something from me i learn from them and uh, it's just a privileged position to be just from a standpoint of learning so i by the way shekhar ub40 is called ub40 because all the three band members were unemployed in the dole form the unemployment form in uk is called unemployment benefits 40 oh wow so i have music and we started a website on the business of music called loudest.in 3 years back we do an annual conference where music meets business music meets technology it meets capital it's called music king we did it last month virtually but we did two editions the day of jw marriott the next physical one we definitely inviting us to lend you there so would love to be there would yeah. love to be so thank you and, yeah thank yeah you. i would like to just add two more things here uh something very interesting and i remember during your conversation that you know one when we say that you know uh, everyone will get his own opportune time to do something in in life and i remember that uh, after my 12th exam in 81 uh, i was uh, fourth merit in maharashtra and one of my friends came up and said yaar do mahina abhi kya karenge chuttiyan yeah, you know our colleges will start after two months so let's do some tuitions and that was my first experience with uh, education where we actually placed uh, you know some 15 rupees of uh, classified in nagpur times uh, classified and we said okay we want to offer tuitions to all aspiring 12th graders and of course it never happened because our school was there and our college was there and, and unfortunately nobody called us those days but i i'm glad that after 81 uh, we finally got a chance in 2002 to start this institution and uh, coming to music i'm i'm personally a great follower of music and around uh, 78 or 79 it was mukaddar ka sikandar which had come so and i i love to hear music and hamare ghar mein sirf ek philips ka radio tha aur us pe jo rf you know am pe gaane aate the wohi hum sunte the to maine one of my friends had bought a tape ka you know lp player and he had a lp so i said okay i go and buy my father had a small record player hmv ka to main 30 kilometers gaya by auto rickshaw i brought the lp with me to listen to a few days and i was listening to my mukaddar ka sikandar songs on a rented lp i'm glad today that i'm i'm i got his opportunity to work with shekhar and to create this great music academy and i'm sure that you know it will create many many memorable and uh, very historical moments going forward for the young generation so thank you so much mr batra i know we met for the nri awards in uh, mumbai and you were a great jury on the awards which we had supported uh, two times now for five years but uh, it's great finally we get to meet you and wonderful to have a thank you for partnering with us we the kind of feedback we are getting it's for you to see i it's real the beauty about digital it's you know this up out there so you can see the and you know thank you for making an aap hum na media wale hain to ek headline dekhte hain aaj ki headline hai gao to ustad ki tarah suno to shagird ki tarah i think that's the headline today and i just want to atul i just want to tell you that my parents are academic my father is 81 he will be 81 on 15 december and uh, my mother is 6 june so she just turned 78 she started her 79th year and this and you know i come from a kid i went to a business school called mbi you know mbi and with all humility i am on the board of mbi the first alumnus in 50 years to be on the board and i'm really truly humble uh, but may college may be i would bring people like shekhar to the campus to talk uh you know i was very interested in media i would read 20 magazines in 1990 and i'm a quizzer so i remember things aur aaj bhi main wahi kar raha hu so subconsciously jo hota hai you know whatever you are you're attracted to music whatever you are attracted to subconsciously that becomes part of your life god sends you that 
that's how you attract it to yourself. I mean, these things about universe, uh, I believe in that. I mean, every day I write thoughts and post uh, to my community. I really believe uh, intent matters. Even if there is a temporary problem, if you have the right intent, you will come out of it. Uh, and, you know, I believe in what Shekhar said, maybe a little old fashioned, that hard work matters. Uh, improving the craft every day matters. And I keep saying, the harder you work, the luckier you get. So you have, you guys are working hard to put this together. You have the right intent. I'm sure it'll be a big uh, school of learning. And I wish you both luck in this journey of enabling the dreams of students, uh, bringing creativity to their learning experiences and creating uh, musical superstars. So thank you, Shekhar. Thank you, Atul. Look forward you, to having another conversation soon, soon enough. Thank you.